getting the mute off. Ron Kinsley, John Wigheimer, here. Stacy Hessel, Tom Duffy is excused. Dale Schleter, you have a quorum. Let the record indicate we have a quorum. Next item is Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number four, certification compliance open meeting laws. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Thank you. Number five, meeting agenda. The agenda is set. Number six, public comment. Anybody wishing to speak to the committee? We have Ms. Linda Zomer, please. Linda Zilmer, property owner in Edgewater and resident of the village of Birchwood. And um, this morning I'd like to speak to some of the financial analysis. Um, last month when I saw the analysis that was done on the elected officials survey uh, with all the different types of analysis and the map, I was just blown away. That was, I mean, it just demonstrates a skill level and an enthusiasm, and that's rather rare to find. And have been going through a similar exercise with um, our Birchwood School District is going to referendum, and um, their school board members and staff are going out to each town. And so there's been a lot of trying to take num a lot of numbers and make them understandable to the public. So kudos. And then with regard to elected officials, I do hope that there's an adjustment made, not that paying more will attract any more qualified candidates, but I really think that Lynn has served very well and if, if anyone could perform as well as, as, as she has, it definitely deserve more money. Um, also building on the financial capabilities that the county has now, I would ask that um, in future months that an analysis be given to you on the shifting of the tax property tax burden to non-TIF district properties, um, especially in reading in the newspaper where um, the city of Hayward may be looking to annex land and extending or creating a new TIF district. There's never been an analysis of how that burdens the rest of the taxpayers in the county. Um, also, um, whether it's the tech college double digit, uh, digit increases or the Hayward School District double digit increases, uh, the public's really trying to understand uh, why property taxes have gone so high. And I think it's only fair to help explain. And I think you have the capability to do that analysis. And also right now out in the Department of Revenue website, uh, sales tax collections out there by industry sector are only updated through October, 2023. But when it is updated through the end of the year, I think it would be meaningful to do an anal or see an analysis on the sales tax collections by industry. Because if you look at accommodations and food service, which are the primary um, indicators of tourism, those really haven't grown and they're not a large part of the economy. And to help you better make uh, informed decisions, I, I think that that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody virtual then? Number seven, approve the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll make seven. Oh, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. There's a motion by Mr. Rickheimer, second by Ms. Hessel to approve as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number eight. Lucky for us, we have a good finance gentleman here to explain every little detail to us. Well, we're going to try. Um, so what I've added from last month's discussion is I took, and this is a sheet that I handed out, the multicolored one. I took each of our positions and then prorated the salary as if it was 40 hours and 37 and a half hours, and then compared again to each of those, um, all counties, all rural, similar population, regional and best comps at both 40 and 37 and a half hours. 
Um, looking at this, if we based our salary on 37 and a half hours, we would be anywhere from a little over 99 to about 102% of comps. So that might be a place to start looking. Um, we don't need to make a decision yet. Uh, we are, Andy's been meeting with the officials starting to, to um, cause we've done that as past practice to get their input. So. Yeah. Just to go off. Everybody's aware of that, that our understanding, my understanding of the positions is that they're currently identified as 35 hour positions. And which is, I think goes back to when all the positions in that department, those departments were 35 hour hour positions. It says 37. If we increased them to 37 and a half, we would be at comps then. Thank you. And so I've, I've met with uh, Paul a little bit to learn the history, but I have a meeting this afternoon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow with all. Yeah, with, I'm meeting with all three of them just to discuss that and kind of do a look back on last year. But that that was part of the discussion. But that's what Mike and I have talked about is um, moving them to a full time position. Which would be 40. Right. Or, or 37 and a half, either one. But either way, uh, you know, adjust the rate to reflect a full time position, I think. And we're kind of looking at it as we don't know who's running or not running, but all the other positions in there now are full 40 hour week positions. And the back years ago, they were all 35. But we're still behind. We're still behind all counties, but that's because these positions are locked in. I mean, as far as. Right. I mean, looking at either of them, I mean, sheriff or clerk, even with that increase, they're behind. Well, all counties, you're looking at Milwaukee, Madison, and much larger areas. Yeah. That's why. Oh, I all counties, right. I'm sorry. I sorry. distilled the data down okay. closer you're, and closer to, you're right. to similar counties. But if we may, let's explain for just a moment. We have to set these wages and we have have a vision to look out for four years because they run a four year term. And that's what really hurt us this right. last time. But no one could see the future out there that well, at least I couldn't. And uh, so that's what we have to try to put. Yeah. And that's, look at now. that's and, Mike's numbers are based on 2024. Cause those are already set. He's showing you what it would look like if we had it at 40, 37 and a half. Then the next step is to look at what do we want to do for 25 Well, 20. We have to decide 25, 26, 27 and 28. Whether that's on a, you know, we assign a percent and assign the salary commensurate with that percent increase every year. Um, part of part of that, why we don't have to do anything yet if we don't want to, is every county is in the same position right now, and there's not. I think there's only one county in the state that we know of that has already set their next four years. So usually we try to keep an eye on what everybody else is doing to. to so if we, if we do this, is just set it for the next. We have to set it for four years. And by when? By end of March. Okay. April. That's when they have to go papers. Right. So we have to have it approved at the March board meeting. It has to be set before the papers go out. And these are comps. This isn't what we would recommend for the four years. This might be a starting point for year one, and then we would recommend a percentage increase. The rest of the staff that work under these positions are all at 40 hours a week. So that you know tells me right now, as far as I'm concerned, we need to move into 40 hours. Okay. I think we at least need to present that so current elected officials or future ones we understand that. Um, and it's it's the weird, not weird, but statutorily, they're constitutional officers. And I don't think I mean other counties, other situations, they could come in for 20 hours a week or they could come in for 60 hours a week. Their responsibility is to maintain the, the get the duties of the office done by statute. Or that the office is getting those job duties done. Well, that's a good point. But I also know that most all of them are working well over 40 hours. Oh, present, absolutely. Yep. And it's only fair for us to move their wages up to that, mm -hmm. make it a little bit more accommodating. So we can do a couple of things. We can put this off till next month or we could presently if we so choose to make a motion to move it to 40 and then you can continue on your analysis and bring it back in March. Yes. 
Turn your light on, my friend. I would make a motion to a move of those salaries to 40 hours a week uh, because, as it has been said, they work a lot more than 40 hours. They stay until the work is done, especially around election time and other busy times. After that, then we need some increases, but we can do that later. But I think having the uh, raise to 40 hours is, is a given. We have to do that. Thank you. A second that motion. So we have a motion by Mr. Sleeter, second by Mr. Righeimer to move these positions to 40 hours a week. Discussion. So you'll bring back the analysis in February after speaking with them, so then we can approve it to bring to the full board. Is that correct? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we'll base it off of 40 hours, and we'll come back next month with the recommendation for 25, and then how much it should increase through 28 okay. for you to consider. And then can this be done with... Um, each agency, or is this just for the elected officials? Just, I mean, we... just the elected. Okay, got it. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. We'll vote on that for 40 hours. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to discuss on this at this time? So you bring it back to 40 hours compared to the other counties. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Chairman, <clears throat> Chairman, I got a question. Yes. Andy, when are we going to address the county board supervisors, stipends and wages? Yeah, that was on an agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, state is that was set at present. Yeah. And then increase that as well. Okay. Number nine, finance department report, sales tax distribution. All right, we got the final sales tax for December. Um, it was down a little bit from last year, about even what two years ago, but for the years we ended up at 2.958. So we fell just short of the $3 million, which was kind of a arbitrary goal I had set. But we had a very strong year. Um, that would put us at 358000 over budget for the year. Um, Andy and I have talked. What we would propose is to put that to a restrict, restricted fund balance account that we could use to draw from in years that maybe we don't hit our sales tax target or... I mean, really, any other shortfall that could cover, rather than just have it in unrestricted. Any thoughts on that? It makes sense because it's a variable revenue source, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, if there's, if there's some need that we need it, we should use it to better the county. Yep. So I don't know if I'd want to restrict it or not. Yeah, we still have discretion over it. We just earmark it. We did budget. Now we've increased the amount we're using in the budget every year. So this year's budget, 2.8. Yes, 2.8. Yeah. Sorry, County has historically budgeted very conservatively on the revenue side and probably more liberally on the expense side. We're trying to move to a little more... Um, not realistic, but more targeted what we're going to hit. What this would do is allow me to budget probably what we're looking at for sales tax, and then if it did fall short, we would have this safeguard. Um, that's kind of the idea behind it, instead of always budgeting significantly below what we're anticipating, get it more towards what we're expecting. Thank you. Um, Moving on to budget performance, this is through the end of the year now. Um, I ran this on January 2nd, and I know we've had some changes since then. 
for two more months, we'll be getting invoices and revenues that we'll have to book back to 23. So this is not complete yet, but we are in very good shape. On the revenue side, we have, um, not according to this, but according to the actuals now, I ran it again yesterday, and we are right at the budgeted figure for revenue, and that is without doing that pull from fund balance. So we've had a really good year. Um, obviously, a lot of that is due to some due to sales tax. The majority is the interest income just went wild from where it was when we set the budget back in October of 22. So that's, you know, we've, we're almost going to be a million dollars over budget in the on interest. So it's because we had good guidance. We, the economy has done well. I mean, they, well, at least they've raised the rates to try to um, have a positive impact on the inflation. So that's why the rates have been higher. We're benefiting from it, so I'm not going to complain. Um, some planning goes into it, but a lot of it is just the luck of where the rates are. Um, another one is stumpage. We had another really good year in stumpage. So congrats to Greg and his crew. Um, we're going. That's one where we need to celebrate it while we have it. Um, down the road, it looks like it may not be as good as it's been the last few years. So um, that's another place where we could end up with a shortfall in the future. So having some reserves to offset that would be helpful. Why are they saying it is going to go down in the future? I if think it, demand is down. So the when the demand's down, price is down, not as many people willing to do as much. Okay. Andy, do you have more insight than that? Yeah, just our the the markets, the information from the markets is that things are demand has gone down, so the price of uh, prices are going down, so the demand for stumpage is down. Probably it's also based on our fall sale. We had more than usual no sales, like no bids on some of the parcels that were put out for sale, and then some of the parcels that did sell were at minimum, at the minimum bid amount. There wasn't as much competition. That being said, there were some parcels that had not sold the last couple of sales that were sold. So, you know, based on the product that's being produced, the different stumpage amounts, demands go up and down. But our book of sale is still level for where it was. So um, we're not, it's not like it's a doom and gloom either. Um, but the, the spring sale usually tells a better story than the fall sale. So if we see a, uh, a lot of minimum bids in the spring sell, then then maybe we'd be more concerned than we are now. But so it's it's a market based uh, revenue source for us. So um, it just the the foresters are saying that the market's getting soft. Well, a month ago, I think LP quit taking. They did. Mm -hmm. I don't. Know if I haven't heard anything lately. So that's a big part of the market. Sure is for us. Chairman, I got a question for Mike. Mr. Markren, have you started to budget or think about budgeting revenue from carbon credits? And what is our thought on that? Because when we approved that, we had expected maybe that there was some revenue going to come from yeah, that. There there won't be any probably for 25 even. Has Bayfield seen a check yet? I believe they've seen a small check the last I heard, but everything is at least six months behind from when – the county signed on. When you signed on, it's at least six months further out. There's additional third-party audits now that the carbon registry is acquiring, which is the reason we've been told that everything is being pushed out further. So, and Bayfield was two years ahead of us? Uh, well, yes. Well, a year and a half. year and a half. So, so, no, probably not even for 26 would we be expecting anything. So, hopeful for the future, but not planning on it yet. Um, on the expense side, we didn't have to dip into contingency. That was $200,000, so we're looking good there. Um, ambulance revenue is down, but the expenses are down as well. Any net net income that they have at the end of the year would be another restricted fund we would set up, and then we would offset 25 levy with any fund balance we had in ambulance. So that could be a property tax savings in the future. Um 
overall expenses are really strong. Um, good place for this time of year. Like I said, we are still booking some, making adjustments. So we'll have some still to make. And um, by next month, we'll have a better idea where we are, but probably not for two months will we really know where we're sitting or have a really good idea. Um, human services. Last year, they had a net income of about half a million. Now we're showing a deficit of about a quarter million. Uh, I know there's a lag in grant revenue. I expect them to come fairly close to neutral by the end of the year. They also have about a $2 million fund balance of their own, so I would not expect to transfer any money to them for the 23 budget. Highway Department, I did a large CIP transfer that put us from negative to positive. Um, since I ran this, they're down about 100000 due to expenses. And then we have not done depreciation yet. So when that's all done and we close them out, they're probably going to be about neutral as well. But it's better than it looked a month ago. Um, and I'll talk a little more about that when we get into CIP. Um, which Chairman? next? Yes. I know Mr. Markrit and Mr. Schleter at Health and Human Services, we learned that Oda County placements for youth and adults is way below where we normally are. Do you, Andy, do you have any idea why that is or what's the rationale for that? I mean, I'm glad for it, but it used to really just bust the budget. I, the only thing I can say is that there were, uh, it doesn't take but a, a couple high cost placements to bust the budget. And so we haven't had any. Uh, new ones or unanticipated ones the last couple of years. Um, so uh, the adult out of county placements are within. We haven't had to tap into the reserve fund for that. Now, the only, I should say the youth out of county placements are up, though, but they're, they don't cost as much as the adults. Hmm. And I think the human services is doing a good job of managing those placements. Uh, if, you're, if they're in Winnebago or Mendota, those are very expensive. So if they're in there, we try to get them out and put into a lower cost facility like Trempolo or a, um, a, a home setting. All right, and then CIP. So highways handled different than any other department. Um, that's a closeout at the end of the year. And in years past, we had waited for the auditors to make this entry. I actually did this on December 19th just to see where we were at. And it, um, we had purchases going back to 21 CIP. So the dollar amount is large. We had a lot of catch up on um, equipment that had been hard to get the past couple of years. So that's why that number is bigger. Um, we have, there still is about $76,000 in 23 CIP. So we have not exceeded what was budgeted. It's just, we hadn't been spending it the last couple of years. No, we, we're able to this year. So that's why that number is bigger. Um, but like I said, it also helped their budget a lot because they had been carrying those as expenses until I did the transfer from CIP. Any questions on that? Other than highway, we had a small airport match from a project that probably happened two years ago, honestly. They're a little slow on their billing. Any questions on CIP? Um, next is this resolution. So we do our, we get a grant for transportation for elderly, and we subcontract through Senior Resource Center for that service. And if you recall, um, it's probably been two years now, it was right before I was hired, that we used ARPA money to purchase a van for a senior resource center. Well, that had a little bit of a snowball effect because we normally would have purchased that van with this grant, the 8521 grant, we used a couple years of proceeds to go towards that. While doing that through ARPA, we had money left over. And in years past, um, my understanding is we were able to just have senior resource center keep that money and then spend it down as they had expenses. Well, the um, Department of Revenue, we got a new representative for this grant 
that's no longer allowed as a practice. So we had to set up a trust fund or have to set up a trust fund to deposit those funds into. And then Senior Resource Center can submit receipts to us to expend the money still. They just can't control the money at the end of the year. So that's all this is, is to set up that trust fund. And it has to be a separate bank account, a separate fund in our um, financial software. And we've done all that. So this is just uh, to set up the trust. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve setting up the transportation trust fund. Second. Motion by Ms. Hessel, second by Mr. Ringheimer to set up the trust fund for the transportation fund of 85.21. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Marker, and how much, what is the amount we'd put in that trust fund? And then what would, what would the interest be we would be looking at? Uh, $33,560. Um, the interest would probably be at our regular rate, which is about four and a quarter right now, but it has to stay in this trust. Like that can't go to the county. This money can't go to the county. It has to still go to the original purpose. So interest stays in that account. Correct, yep. So we established a separate a fund account for it. Yes. Um. The account you were talking about for Senior Resource Center, is that just neutral for Senior Resource Center? Yeah, we act as a pass-through. Mm -hmm. It's just under 80000 a year. It's been the same yeah. amount for probably 10 years. And then they get the money. It has to be used for specific purposes of transportation. Mm -hmm. So it, it can't supplement anything else they do. It right. just has to pass this through us to them. Basically, they're a pass through to the community then. Okay, but as far as their income, this doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the meal revenue, no. This this is separate, and they can't supplement their meal revenue right. with it. So it's just, it's neutral, yes. But we have to provide the service. So if we didn't have the grant, then it would be a cost of the county. Okay. So we want the grant. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. And we did a resolution for the grant itself, I believe, in November. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next is the investment report. Or November, this is, it's always a month behind. And um, you can see if you want to scroll down a little bit, we did hit that magic number of a million dollars with all of our investments, including debt service and um, capital improvements, not just the general fund. And then you can see the balances of the unspent ARPA, which again, those are, we're down to $200,000 broadband contracts and then some basically from interest is the 46,000. Op opioid, we spent very little again um, from last month and then LATCF, we have not spent any yet. Have we had any more requests for ARPA funds for uh, high-speed internet systems? No, I mean, essentially all of our ARPA dollars are obligated at this point. So we're just waiting. There's a couple of those projects that have not claimed their money. Um, so we've essentially told them um, we don't have any. But what we've done here for the last couple rounds of broadband grants is I've done letters of support with a commitment from the county depending on the number of subscribers they're going to affect of 500 or a thousand dollars, because that gets them points within their application. If we're a financial partner and there's, but there's no, whether we did a thousand dollars or $50,000, it doesn't appear there's any change in the amount of points they get in the application. Right. So showing us as a partner is still helpful to them. 
Thank you. Go next, Mike. Can I just double back on one thing? Because yeah. I know when we look at the numbers, the things that things are, I guess I'll say going all right. I mean, income from stumpage and interest has been good. So Mike and I have talked a little bit about what, what we're going to do. Just as an example, we'll, uh, was it two years ago when we had a surplus coming out of 2021, we allocated some funds to, to backfill some funds that had been emptied like the human services fund because there was high cost placements. And so their reserve fund had been drawn down. So the board passed a resolution to replenish that account. And then you also re also replenish the resource uh, development fund. Um, human services hasn't had the high cost placements, so their reserve fund is still whole. But the resource development fund was drawn down with the last dam project. So now you're going to hear in the next couple months uh, at the land, water, and the zoning meeting about the next dam project on Fish Trap Dam, which will probably cost us four to five hundred thousand. Um, half the project, anticipating we get half of it funded by the DNR. So one of the recommendations might be to fund, start putting money into the resource development fund for that project. So we don't have to put it, it's been planned for in the CIP, but that's like a big piece of a CIP in one year. And it, we have to kind of clear out room for that. So that might be a good use of some of these funds is just to pay for that. Put the money in the resource development fund so it's there when that project moves ahead. Chairman, yeah. Andy, in the past, I know we looked at wages too. For our employees to make sure they're comparable and we're retaining our good employees. Has that come across you and Mike's discussion? Um, not yet. Uh, for some of these, we look at one time expenses because, I mean, we have made an effort to up the wages the last couple of years. So there's been more than has been done in the past. We look at kind of what the sustainable dollars that, you know, what we get from shared revenue, what we can reasonably project year to year on stumpage and in sales tax to make the budget out because it compounds itself. If we do a big wage increase this year, it doesn't affect just this year's budget. We have to maintain that in the following years. So we probably do. I probably play it a little more conservative. Um, but I mean, we've didn't, we've done, I would say close to the market wage, wage increases the last couple of years, but there's still some catching up and we've been able to adjust within the departments without the, um, Cost of living adjustment. We've been able to make some adjustments within the, within the departments on the scale, the, within the the pay, the pay grade you've approved. We've moved some to get people closer to the market as we've been hiring. Mike, uh, Chairman, one yes. real quick. Mike, have we looked at like applying some of this to debt reduction? Or is that something you'd ever consider or it's already we it's had, already in place had this discussion it is something we could look at doing which would be more of a one-time expense or defeasing some of the debt we'd set the money aside and then draw it as payments came due all right on the ambulance now we're looking at December through November, um, starting with the aging schedule. Um, the overall amount's a little higher than last month, percentages of current and um, greater than 120 days are relatively similar. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that one. Uh, the average calls per month are still up over the previous 12 month cycle, but down from what it had been prior to that. Um, not a lot we can control with that. Some of it is due to transports, but some of it is just demand. Um, then looking at the average build per month, we're up over last year, down from where we had been again, but fewer calls means fewer amounts build. The average collected though is, which is the next slide, shows a little bit more growth because the gap dollar amount gap between that is about the same as build so that means we're collecting more per billing which the next slide shows we're at about 38 percent compared to 34 from a year ago um, still down from where we were um, and then the next slide 
is the amount billed and collected per call. And this is where something's not looking right. And I briefly touched on this last couple months that we're not doing as well as we did a year ago. And um, talked with John about this. And he had mentioned he's going to start working with staff to make sure we're maximizing our billing. And um, last week, he set up a in-service training with LifeQuest, and it was mandatory for all ambulance staff. And they looked at maximizing billing, making not like overbilling, but making sure you're not missing something that we're owed. And that was a really good training. I actually sat in on it too. And it was about an hour and a half, two hours. So I'm hoping that we see a little bit of turnaround. Our dollars collected per call is still strong, but the dollars billed per call is down almost $140 from the previous 12 month cycle. So we really need to investigate that and make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing there and not missing anything. So hopefully that number is gonna start going up again. Any questions on that? It's good that you set in on the training. Well, a lot of it was over my head because it's a lot of codes and stuff, but at least <laughs> I could tell that we're working towards getting better. That's the bottom line. We always want to do better. Chairman? Yes. Mike, we had just recently heard about an increase in the all-inclusive rate for Medicare patients and Medicaid. Are you aware of that or looking ahead to that? They touched on that, yeah. Yep. So that should have an effect on it as well. A little higher reimbursement rate percentage. All right. And then the ambulance calls by township. That's just updated. The numbers still show kind of a circle around the city of Hayward. And at the further out you get, the fewer calls there are. But it's also the population gets a little more sparse the further out you get to. Um, the ambulance net income is showing. 355 through November 30th. Um, again, whatever that ends up being at the end of the year will be a restricted fund balance that will reduce, directly reduce the levy in 25. So that's always going to have a year leg, two year leg, but um, we want to make sure we're doing that the right way and putting anything that we have in there against the levy. And the next few slides are just kind of a breakdown, which we've looked at before, of the aging summary. Most of it's private pay. Um, next biggest one is Medicare. That works a little slower. And then you can see some, not a lot, but some insurance throughout. Um, then if you go down a little further, I put a couple new graphs in just to give you some more information. There we go. Maybe shrink it a little bit. Um, so last month, I was asked to put together what we're writing off a month. And I was able to pull reports. Actually, this is in LifeQuest, so I just had to find out how to do it. And you can see that we write off about $7,000 a month. Um, the green line in the line graph is the running average. So you see it at the beginning, it had a little more variation. Now we're getting a little smoother because the longer you have, the more months you have on there, the more the average isn't affected by the each current month. And then the blue line is what the actual was for that month. So you can see there has been a little uptick from September, October, November, which would probably be write-offs from the summer, I'm guessing, really. Her bills from the summer would be written off finally about that time. So is this helpful information? It's about 7000 a month. Is this similar? I mean, throughout the state, I'm assuming this is a similar trend. If you um, did this graph. That I don't know. You know. This is all I've got. I don't have anything to compare it to. I don't know where I would pull that from either. Do you, Andy? Probably the best thing to do is not ask other questions. The bill for uh, the bill network for life services. Yeah. You know, the reason I say that is it just seems like it's a I don't know how you would improve upon it, I guess is my, my point. But if somebody is. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, our number one 
on the agent schedule is private pay and that's you know they can't pay it they can't pay it i guess right i'm sure some of it is on a payment plan which the next graph will show a little bit of that but um so this is the, the what goes to collections each month so this is a bigger number but that shows that collections is working as well if we're putting on average 31,000 into collections and we're only writing off 7,000 a month that shows that um, 24,000 is getting collected so that's good who do we use for collections or who do they use? um maybe they do their own it's in latitude so if you look at the breakdown of the aging summary Anything that goes to any form of latitude is collections. Right. I have no idea. But um, that, so that's showing what is going to collections. And then the column next to items placed is items reversed. If something happens and we find out we can collect it, it comes back out of um, written off to collections again so that 19,000 and items reversed was something that came back to collections that we had previously written off when we get paid from collections how much what percent do they keep do we know that I don't know either um, that's one I can ask I use a collection agency out of Hudson. I'm just comparing. What percentage is that? I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to look. I mean, it seems like it's usually 15 to 30 percent when you get into collections, probably more towards 30, but I don't, I'll have to find that out. And that's all I've got in ambulance then. Good job. I go 12 and 13 minutes. So we'll skip 12 and go to 13. You got some numbers for us? Yeah, this was uh, asked to be put on the agenda because the Public Safety Committee has approved um, the deputies who live outside the county uh, being allowed to take their squads home with them. We had the same discussion last night with Public Works about the two highway uh, vehicles that are assigned to employees who also live outside the county, and they've approved um, allowing those vehicles to, to go home with them. Um, so it does have a, a budget impact. We'll also have it on the admin committee next because it is part of our personnel policies is where the policy actually comes from. Um, so there was a you know, request to have it on here to discuss the financial impact uh, of those. And it, yeah, Mike has prepared a um, analysis of what we anticipate the cost would be. I'll let him explain that. All right, so you, you guys know I'm data driven. This is not a commentary on whether we should or shouldn't do it. I just want you to have all the information. So this is what the impact would be. So this other sheet that I handed out, not the multi colored one, but just the white one. The first column is the impact on a single from and on a single deputy. Um, so we kind of took an average of if we did this would be 40 miles a day, 16 shifts a month, 12 months a year would mean an extra 7,680 miles on each squad that was going out of the county. If I figure out just like, well, I'll talk about those later. So then if we had a four month or a four year or five year cycle on squad replacements at four years, that means an extra 30,720 miles at five years, an extra 38,400 miles. And then the next two down are potential impacts on the deputy, him or herself. If we do this, it's, it's an IRS issue. So there is a formula that we can use 
um, up to the 15 miles, I believe, we can charge, and it's not charge, it's a tax really, of $3 a day. So that would, at 16 shifts a month, 12 months a year, that would be a $576 tax on the deputy. That That's an IRS thing. Um, then beyond that, and my understanding is that this is, once they're outside the county line, it's commuting. It's not part of their job any longer because they don't work in Washburn County. They don't work in Bayfield County. So that's why the IRS law comes into effect. And then the second one is the mileage recovery, which would be beyond the 15 mile radius outside the county. So we figured an average of 20 miles outside the county. So that would leave five miles each way or 10 mile total each day times 16 months or shifts a month times 12 months a year at the IRS rate of 67 cents a mile would be a mileage recovery of $1,286.40. Um, if we did that, that would be on each deputy as well. So then when I move over to the Excuse effect- minute, please. Yes. I want to make sure it's clear in my mind. So them two boxes, the deputies are refunding us? That would be, that's just not under the right? If that was um, an alternative. The first one is the, the commuting rate. That is, regardless, that's just, if the vehicle is used for commuting um, outside the county, we have to charge the value of it. Um, Who we charge, oh, we just charge the department. It's, it's on their payroll. It's not charged, it's part of their, it's like taxing a benefit. Okay. Oh. It's a replacement for the tax on the benefit, which would be cheaper if we tax the total mileage. And then they had, or if they had to be taxed on the benefit of the total mileage, because that would be 67 cents on all of that then. So that would be a much higher okay. amount. Thank you. So this is a lesser one that is legal. It's a legal way to do it through the IRS. So this doesn't come to us. That would be an assessment that would go on to the IRS. And then, so then going over to the right-hand column, this is assuming six deputies. This would be the effect on the county side then. So that first part I started with would be multiplying it by six figuring out the gas, well, number one, it'd be 46,080 miles in total that it would be adding to our fleet. Um, figuring out a gas at 20 miles a gallon, three and a quarter a gallon comes to 7,488. Um, that, those 46,000 miles would require nine more oil changes at $85 an oil change, which is $765. We do tires at about 25,000 miles. That would require two more sets of tires. That would be $2,000. And then I threw $2,000 in for just miscellaneous repairs and maintenance on 46,000 miles a year. Um, then skipping down a little bit on our 24 CIP, it was $274 for, I believe, six squads. That comes up to 68500 a squad. With these miles, we're figuring we'd have to replace an additional squad every other year. So every year would be half of that, $34,250. Um, the IRS tax I've got in there again for six, which again isn't a cost for us, but it would be a, a mandatory re employee one as far as I can tell. The mileage recovery if we did that um, so then what i've got down there for likely annual operating cost i have that twelve thousand two hundred and fifty three dollars minus the mileage recovery if we did that of seventy seven hundred which would leave an operating cost of about forty five hundred now if i then add in which is still a cost to the county and it would be an additional levy of that half squad a year that brings the total net annual cost to just under 39,000. So very, very close to the number of 40,000, which I, from my understanding has been thrown out. Mr. Schumann. Mike, you're deducting the IRS tax, 
right, from the total cost? No, because that's... that's Because where does the IRS tax go, not to us? No, it would be a withholding that would go right to the IRS. Right. So that really has no effect on the county. Okay. It has effect on the employee. Yeah, my question is, uh, what is the cost of hiring a new deputy? So with the training, it's a... Yeah, what I've been told, it's about twelve thousand dollars. So if you have six times twelve, what is that? Seventy-two thousand. Seventy-two thousand. That would cost us to hire six new deputies. Correct. If it's twelve thousand, then yeah, a deputy. Yep. Okay. Then you got to train them. Now you got to train. And then you want them to work. Yeah, well, we we only are risking losing four now because we already lost two. So. And we have. Um... I asked HR to look up how many employees, county employees we have that live outside of the county. 64. 64 of our county employees live outside the county. Would this pertain to all of them then or just the... Just anyone who's got a take-home vehicle, which would be deputies, and then I would imagine it would be our um, both our highway... Commissioner and superintendent, I believe, live outside the county. But when these counties sign up to work for us, they realize the policies. That... Correct, Lynn? But the issue is, is that the surrounding counties are not charging this. So we're losing, we're going to lose people to the surrounding counties because they're not, they're letting people take home their cars. I just talked to the Washburn County Highway Commissioner last night, and they let all of their their highway department and sheriff's department, that's who we lost our two deputies to, they let them take home their vehicles. So I think that that's why it's been brought to attention um, is because there's that risk of, of losing it and it costs more to hire new than it does to offer this. Our policy, like we, we had talked about, I think it was last year, correct me if I'm wrong, about all county employees um, taking home a vehicle, they can't take home the fleet any longer. Correct? Can you can you address the county employees when they would take home their cars, and they were, or else they were getting mileage? We addressed the out of county employees situation last year. So wasn't that addressed in when we we didn't allow them to take home the county vehicles any longer? Uh, what we did last year is we allowed people to take their own vehicle to a conference. Right. To a conference. Okay, thank that. you. I couldn't remember what that was. So, so this is right now they they have a if, if they use a vehicle for their county business, which I guess is mostly the sheriff's department, but there's others, right? Right now they commute to work, so they would drive into Hayward, pick up their car, and then no, do their I think they drive to the county line. So this. The two things we're talking about, deputies, yeah. deputies are all assigned to vehicle. Right. Right now, if they live in county, it's going to help with them. Okay. Right. They drive, then they can log on to duty as soon as they leave the house. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, they live outside the county, they have a spot where they park the vehicle at the county line. They drive the personal vehicle from there to the home and back in the town. How so far is that, like, for, I mean? It's, it depends. We have a, well, we have, had six, now we have five. We averaged it at 20. Is there some that are at 25 or something like that? So this is a fringe benefit to them. If they that's can, that's the way they see it. I mean, if I were to talk about communities that are outside the county, mm -hmm. they don't have jurisdiction. But see what the highway is. Right. The time they drive from the house outside the county, the line, there's only 30 feet. So that's why we believe the IRS community. Right. There's different ways you can calculate it. You think the plan is. But, but this, 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 this. This issue is like a make or break for employees. Like, if I don't get my car home, I, I don't want to work here. I'm not going to speak with employees. We did hear from all deputies at the public safety meeting, and I, none of them laid out that I can do this or I'm leaving. But, you know, it is a. Uh, uh, yeah, in other counties, not all counties, but there are a number of them near us and statewide that allow deputies to take the cars home outside the county. It is, yeah, I would say it's a benefit to them. Let's go on there and say it's yeah. And other departments, this would apply to them as well, but there's not as many of them. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. All departments, 
Gotcha. Okay. And so the benefit to the count, so for an extra 40 grand, what's the benefit to the county? Um, well, I believe it's retaining the employees. That's, I think that's. So it is make or break. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's how it's being presented. How much retaining the employees. Okay. Because there is the, that part, that's part of the discussion on the board to dig into, and I think the public safety committee did, is there's benefits beyond that to the employees having the, the vehicle. Um, but if the county is retaining an employee, there is also some response and efficiency in doing their job, and that type of thing is well considered. Because they don't go to their drop off spot there. Yeah, they can respond three minutes faster or something. I encourage you to watch the public safety because Japanese laid out some of their reasons. Some of them are on the SWAT team. Their SWAT gears all in their car. They're depending on the SWAT call they might have to get from their house or the SWAT is located, then go whatever directions the SWAT calls. So there's some of that efficiency in doing their job and safety reasons that are has some benefit to that happen. Is so the reason to not do it then would be you want to save forty thousand. Is there any? I don't even know how to ask the question. It's just, I mean, I understand that the reason they want to do it. Yep. I'm just trying to be stick around forty thousand dollars. I guess. I'm sorry. If you're looking at me to answer that question, it's put me in a like, more of a policy. But I, if I'll just relay. I mean, I would encourage you to talk to the sheriff. He had some concerns about perception. You know, from a board standpoint, elected official, that's something you have to think about is we have five or six deputies living outside the county and, and commuting in. There might be some concern with that. You know, I think distance is another factor that's come up is how how far out is the supply. Yeah, and how much does it make sense? Like, is it still uh, effective if they're living X amount of miles out versus if we require them to live within a shorter band? Um I mean, cost is one factor, but there, you know, there's offsetting arguments for the right. cost as well. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Buckholtz, he was at Thank the you. public safety meeting, can relay what he heard. Well, what I'm hearing is nobody's asking about what effect it would have on the budget. And I brought this up at public safety, uh, charging these deputies mileage to take these vehicles home from the county line home and back again it's got to help the budget if we do this and and when i asked them on the public safety meeting they said they had talked about it themselves and they were not against it and i'm still a firm believer that we should charge them some mileage so But charge them mileage from when they cross that county line to their yeah, house. County line right. to their residence, and then from their residence back to the county line, charge of mileage. So it helps reduce the cost, but gives the lot right. team their right. response. I mean, I'm not against them taking it home, but I still, I still say that they should have some kind of a, where they have to pay some kind of a premium mileage to do that. Versus a fringe benefit. Right. I brought that up at the last meeting is they have a choice. Either you leave it at the county line or if you take it home, you pay pay the mileage. But, so what did the public safety do? Did they did did they implement anything to no charge? No, they they didn't want to put no charge on. Um, yes. I think I think another a financial situation that we have to address is why do we have 64 employees living outside of county besides just this issue of the sheriff's department why can people not afford to live in Sawyer County and how do we address that financially um, you know if our if our local people can't afford to live here and that's what the deputies are are claiming is they can't find housing and if the others you know the other employees if we have 64 living outside of county um, that's a huge concern and and why why can't they live here? There's no housing. Um, so we're going to have this trickle effect in all of the de departments, I think, of not being able to get employees that live in county. Um, 
we need to address it sooner than Mr. Chairman, Mike, do you think the federally approved mileage rate is like 67 something a mile? If we charge them that, would that offset this expense we're going to have? Or would that have to be a much, somebody mentioned premium mileage rate? Well, so I, I did this two ways and three quarters of the mileage would be minimum we wouldn't charge the mileage. They would just have to pay tax on the mileage. And actually doing this commuting rate is much less than that is even. The, um, and this is just what I did. Like I said, we, I thought that there was a 15 mile allowable where that $33 a day could apply to that. Anything above that, I did the mileage. That's where that $1,286 a deputy came from is the, 10 miles beyond the 30 there and back. Um, so if basically, so for six deputies, it was $7,718. If you wanted to charge them the whole mileage, you would take that times four, which would be 28. And yes, it would cover um, about half of the total cost then. But so it's still it's still a budget amendment then the changes are added to the budget. Correct. And then I was aware of the two deputies that recently resigned and one of them lives in the county. So I don't know if this policy is a make or break or retention as well. There must be other things that go with that. Yeah, that I'm not aware of that. Can I, can I ask a question? So you did a great job at uh, for the elected officials, you know, with this. Uh, can we see that with the surrounding counties, with the deputies? Yep. And before we make a decision, I think um, all the facts should be known of what the, you know, what surrounding counties, and then also um, what what the total cost of retaining. I mean, I'm sorry, recruiting. That, that effort, if it is the $12,000 a person or mm -hmm. deputy, I'd like to see that. I think that we're, we're basing it on this uh, $38,000, but I think it could cost us more in the long run to recruit. Um, also, a question I have is if it is, if it is approved, where does that money come out of the budget? No, I know, but I mean, like, if you have to do an amendment, where, where would that money come out of since we... Would it come out of our investments that we've done to make? Well, the that's why I broke it down between operating and total cost, because operating is really the only money that would change the budget, because the cost of the squad itself would be on CIP, and for twenty four there would be no effect because there wouldn't be enough miles to actually require us to purchase an additional. That probably isn't going to hit until okay. 26. It's 25, anyhow. Yeah, the, the 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 capital cost will be rolled into the borrowing, so it may increase the borrowing. If if we continue to do things the way we have with borrowing for the squads, the other operating cost is more of a. And Mike can disagree with me, but to me, it's more of a theoretical discussion because they're going to incur these additional costs this year, just from the the gas and the oil changes. And that'll go into the sheriff's department budget. If they go over budget, I mean, they could find other ways to cut it within their budget. But if they go over, we would go to the contingency fund to move money in to cover this year's budget. Next year's budget, we would budget these expenses into it. And then it's, I mean, yeah, we could pull, um, it's, it's theory like it's, it's going to come out of the investments or the stumpage or whatnot. It's going to come out of our general fund. Or we're going to you know, increase the levy to accommodate it. But if that, if we don't have enough levy, either we, then we choose to, Reduce costs elsewhere, or pull it out of the jet, pull more money out of the general fund to balance the budget. Does that make sense? From a like, when we explain like a theoretical, when we put the budget together, that's how it's going to work out. So sixty four out of out of county, but how many? So there's is there out of the sheriff's department? We're talking about six. So we're talking out of how many deputies are there? I believe there's eighteen patrol. Six out of sixteen. 
I think there's it's, yeah, I think there's a couple investigators on top. It's roughly one third of our. So if this if this were approved, our incentive would be to hire Sawyer County residents. Going if you can find it. If you're strictly looking at costs, it, yeah. Well, yeah. right. Well, I, I, I all right. I understand. There's other other factors requirements. I mean, desires, right? Okay. Um, just I wanted to get a couple other things as long as you kind of expand the discussion. So the other things just to put out so you're aware of them. In our policy, the reason this is an issue or we have to do a policy change is that um, we have a residency requirement for our deputies of 25 miles. But the policy also says that they live outside the county, they cannot take the squad home with them. On a statutory uh, Wisconsin basis, you cannot have a residency requirement for government or county local government employees, except for law enforcement, EMS, those type of employees. And by statute, you can't do it any less than, um, has to be allowing them up to 15 miles to live outside the jurisdiction. Our policy is all right because it goes beyond 15, it's 25. And so, so they can, so right now they, if they live out of county, it can only be 25 miles outside of county. Right. And that's where this discussion about, you know, charging them beyond 15 as an, as an option was brought up because kind of thought that if the state statute allows a residency up to 15, then that's that okay. above the top. The other thing I brought this up last night, it's, this is not like a, a major issue, but our, when this gets to the board, I was going to bring it up before then to whoever to amend the motion at some point. Even our policy is somewhat bad because it says 25 miles outside the county deputy has to live. It does not specify whether that is like how do we draw the line for 25 miles. So we had, um, and I asked legal because the sta state statute um, says 15 miles, does not say in there, but case law at the state level for that residency requirement has been as the crow flies or straight line. Um, I talked to the sheriff and chief, like, how are we applying this here? And really they think it's been more about, you know, how many miles does it take you to get home? Um, so I have both maps prepared so you can see what 25 miles by the crows fly, like we're drawing a circle from the county border is versus what it looks like if it's based on road miles. But I just think at some point we need to make sure we clarify that going ahead. Is it, which one is it? Well, I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the bigger issue is that our policy is not clear. And so we're wanting to change the policy and at that time make it so that they can take home their vehicles and define all the other things that you just noted. And I think we all understand the intent of, you know, the current deputies that's kind of based off of, they all live within 25 miles because of the existing policy. And I'll just tell you, when you look at the maps, there is somewhat of a difference. 25 miles by the crow flies gets us pretty close to the upper peninsula and to the Minnesota border. So it's, I guess that's for you to decide, but there is, it goes across counties to the next county. So. Good discussion. Just so you're aware of that. It's on the agenda for administration. Yep. And I assume it'll get approved. If it gets approved there, it'll go to the full board and we for the day. What are your wishes? That this was easier. Um, I I would make a motion just to approve uh, the changing of the policy to reflect that they can take home that highway department and sheriff's department can take home vehicles and bring that to administration and the full board. Let's put a mileage. Twenty twenty five miles, with the determination of whether it's what the crow flies or or actual mileage. So, I mean, I, I think we need to define the policy. That's what my motion would be, is to define the policy, but to change it to be taking home vehicles. Well, we could do that right now, too, couldn't we not? You could rec make a recommendation. Is that point of order, Chairman, is that on your agenda? Yeah. To address that yeah. policy? You're addressing the vehicle policy, it says. That's part of it, isn't it? I mean, you have to have 
the policy and we're looking at the policy, what needs to be changed, if it needs to be changed, decided if there's changes or not. Correct? I'm looking at Andy. I'm thinking. Okay. Um, to be evaluated the policy with the inclusion of the other vehicle table. So we're evaluating the policy that we well, we can't we can't approve a policy that we don't have the changes yet. Yeah. We're making a recommendation to pass on. Yeah it's on here is the out of county vehicle policy. Um so I think the committee could take that action. I think your basis here though is that you're looking at the financial impact on the budget and whether that that radius and based on these dollar amounts is what you'd like for the policy to be. I don't believe it's spelled out that way. But it could be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, so we have a motion by Ms. Hassel. Could could the motion be repeated now that we've had some discussion? <laughs> no, I can't because that was, uh, that was, uh, yeah. there was discussion made within my policy or within my motion. So uh, that was out of point of order, but um, my motion would be to approve the policy, I'm sorry, to evaluate the policy to include out of county vehicles in the, in the evaluation of that policy. Okay, and then do we, want, do we want to put mileage on it? Uh, with a 25 mile radius as determined by the, the policy. Do we want to put as the crow flies or just leave it? Or do you want to take care of that later? Yeah, well. I just need to approve like yeah. the policy change okay. with the 25 months. That's what my motion is because we still have a lot to evaluate. I will try not to leave you anymore. That's okay. <laughs> Can I? Yes. Um, we need a second. Okay, sorry. I'll make a second to... So there's a motion by Ms. Hessel. I'm seconding the motion for discussion. Yeah, and I was just going to suggest it might be good to include the um, the, the motion or include something that would acknowledge the financial impact that the policy has, that is what you're approving. Because since it's the finance committee, which... Um, but we don't know that yet because we don't have all of that. Well, I think you have the estimate. This is based off of a... You're not going to know because you never know exactly where the deputies are going to live, but you know that you know, we've averaged this out for six deputies at 20 miles each way. Um, so I think that's, you know, it's an estimate, just like the budget always is. But. Do we need to spell it out or just say that, which is good. What do you mean? 38,700 C. What I have is, yeah. I have just to evaluate the policy, and allow officers to take their squads home up to 25 miles. So if we're evaluating it, we're not approving all of that. Okay. You can evaluate the financial part too then, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. That's, okay. Yep. Yeah, but so we don't need an amendment because we'll be evaluating it when we evaluate the policy. Yep. I'm sorry, that's, that makes sense. All right, then. What do you got? <laughs> Okay, a motion was made by Ms. Hessel to evaluate the policy and allow officers to take their squads home up to 25 miles, second by Mr. Kinsley. Evaluate the policy and approve. Evaluate the policy to do that. That's the first one the policy. So did I get that right? Just moves it forward to each committee. Mr. Sleater. This is going to be on the full county board agenda, correct? Eventually, yes. And I think we ought to send it to them with no preconceived re requirements or assumptions or anything. Let's let the whole county board tackle it together at one time. Okay, it's going to the administrative committee first before okay. it gets to the board. Yeah. So I, I just don't see why we need this. Anything, it's going to admin and the whole county board. That's where I think I should, and that's where I think it should be. So. Any other discussion? 
Yes. Now I'm thinking, Andy, should finance be involved in policy changes or is that their jurisdiction? Or I know admin's going to bring it up. Yep. Finance is strictly looking at our financial impact of the county and what this would have in pertaining to finance. I think if the policy has a financial impact, they can, can you know, weigh in on what if the financial impact is manageable or how they want to manage it. And to be clear, we're not approving the take-home squads. We're just evaluating. So I just want to make that clear before it gets poop. Read it back to us, Lynn, please. Okay. I just changed it then. A motion was be made by Ms. Hessel to evaluate the policy to allow officers to take their squads home up to 25 miles, second by Mr. Kinsley. So it's now just evaluating the policy is all the motion is. I had it right the first I had it right the first time. Okay. And no read it back to us. Okay. A motion was made by Ms. Hessel to evaluate the policy and allow officers to take their squads home up to twenty five miles second by Mr. Kinsley. The key word there is and and to evaluate the policy and approve. Mm-hmm. So we've already purposely evaluated. Well, and we did, I think the word was approved, but it should be approved. The other time we did approve. That's what we're evaluating is the other time. Impact. What do you think, Andy? Help us all over. Yeah, I know. I mean, try to figure out. My point in making the motion is to continue to Yeah. Do we have to do anything? Because it's going to be going to admin anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they want to, they're going to ask if we think that it's a financial risk or a financial value. So that's what our job is to Correct. Well, that and then everything else that may happen because of it. And not as just here because it's also a highway department. I mean, it's, it's take home. Vehicles for all other counties, not just for the sheriff's yeah, And then not to complicate anymore, we didn't really. This is the deputies because we know right now they park at the county line, and then anything now they go out beyond the county line will be additional. High department's a little different. One because there's just two vehicles, um, just two vehicles, two vehicles, and they were already going home to with the prior employees. the The net increase in the highway budget is just one vehicle, though. Because the mile, you know, based on the amount of additional mileage that we'll incur for where they live is just one because yeah. one of the prior employees was driving down to Exland with his vehicle. So there's not as big a budget impact there. So I don't mean to be a problem, but so that the evaluation is we know the cost, or we, we're, we're estimating the cost. And the value is a assumption of values retention etc and so that's what you'll spell out in this analysis i guess the scenarios or is it well what are we asking to ana analyze it yeah. right well my request was the county sorry my request was the county's surrounding oh, to see okay. i mean right. we we have it for our elected officials okay my yeah, my I request was yeah. just the point being made that we're doing this for for current employees or elected officials we should be evaluating you know what is the what is the financial impact of this you know we can we can talk about the financial impact of everything but if we don't fix that policy then that's where are you talking about the policy for the my uh residency and take home squads correct okay the uh, the other like the analysis that Mike did for the um, elected official salaries. So we, we keep a spreadsheet of deputy wages, the deputy hourly rates that we use for negotiations. Is that what you? 
Is that your, cause that's, you, I just, you're, that's the one you're showing. Is that what you want? Well, I just think there's a lot of effort put into things that people want to put effort into, but it doesn't seem like we're, I mean, this is great. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying there's not a comparable. There's no comparables of what all the surrounding counties are doing. So if the surrounding counties are trying to cherry pick our, our employees, then we need to see, well, what are they offering that we're not? So you're, you're okay. It's, you're asking like wage benefits, right. cars. Correct. Pay, okay. Yep. Got it. <clears throat> do you need that information before you're making a, a recommendation then, do you feel? Well, I feel like it's more of a conversation is needed before we can, sorry, yeah. more of a conversation or information is needed in both scenarios. You know, what is the cost of hiring a new deputy versus the cost of this? You know, the, yeah. all of those scenarios, they're not, we, we can't make an educated financial guess if we don't have all of that information. I, I just get into discussions because people come to me and tell me these things, but like maybe John doesn't know. So we can't all make an educated guess if we don't have all the information in front of us. Yeah. So that's my worry is that if we're not continuing to evaluate, this is going to get nixed. The policy is not going to get changed. We're not going to know why people are leaving or why they're not coming to Sawyer County. I mean, uh, Mrs. Kelsey just said the other day at public safety that they couldn't hire somebody because they couldn't find a house. So there's, there's situations that we need to look at to figure out, well, do our policies need to be changed? Do we need to enhance budgets to offer different benefits? But just to say, oh, we're not doing it because it's going to save the county 40000 when we don't know how much it's actually going to cost seems like it's not a very good educated guess that we're making or decision making for that point. I mean, I, I think, I think it becomes then uh, no, because I said no, and this is how we've always done business. But if this is how we've always done business, then we're not changing with the times and we're going to lose people. It seems like you should hold off until you get the data on surrounding counties and what it costs to train Exactly, Chairman. Um, this can't come to today's admin meeting because we don't have all the information. And Madam Clerk, you can add it because agenda has already been presented. So we're going to review the policy coming out of public safety. What we wanted from finance was just the financial impact of this. And I appreciate that, Mike. Since we still don't know the financial impact, you're saying that you want this tabled until next month? But if we still don't have the financial impact, then what do you want from this committee? Because we still don't have all, this I, is not the whole. I've got what I want. He gave us the financial impact. We have the impact of doing it. We don't have the impact of not doing it. And we don't have the comps from what other people are doing. So I, I feel it's appropriate to wait to get those to make a decision. So then, therefore, my motion still stands because we still need to evaluate this. So I would still like it to be put on agendas if it if it doesn't get squashed. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, listening to all this, uh, to me, there are just way too many possibilities here that should have been looked at before it was even sent to public safety. Um, I think it just got jumped into too quick, and now it comes to this committee and there's all kinds of hiccups in it, which this committee here, finance committee, should only be talking about the financial impact to the budget on it. Not anymore. Um, I don't. I don't see where all the policy changes and all this and all that has to do with finance. Uh, just the impact on the budget, what it's going to do if these out-of-county deputies take their cars home. Um, I just I just think it's getting carried on too much. Could I have a point of order for the calling the vote, please? So we have a motion and a second to Lynn read the motion. The current motion is, a motion was made by Ms. Hessel to evaluate the policy and allow officers to take their squads home up to 25 miles second by Mr. Kinsley. So that's the motion. We're going to vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? I don't understand it. So 
So the motion fails on a 2-2 two -two tie. So where do you want to go? You want to bring it back next month with the information that you gather? Mm -hmm. So we'll put it on the agenda for next month. Okay. Can I ask what? Yep. This could be on the full board next it can week be. anyways, right? Well, it depends on what the administrative committee does. You know, I mean and just just to clarify, we've got the financial analysis of the cost, but from the other information, cost of training, turnover cost, um, compensation benefits. I mean, that's the type of information you want, comparables for us to other counties. I think to other counties, but also just so we have all the facts, what it's going to cost us if we do it and what if we don't, like Mike had said very well. And, and you know, a point being made, Maybe it shouldn't be at finance. Maybe it, but maybe it shouldn't have been brought to public safety before we found all of this information out. But a conversation has to start someplace, yep. and so we have to bring it to the committees to start a conversation. Yeah, and I think Mike and I can do our best to pull that information together. Uh, just we'll present where we can. I'm just concerned that we not get you the information you want because the cost we can come up with the cost to do it. The cost to not do it is like opportunity cost. You're really not sure because you're basing it on yes. what what people might do or not do. Or if they do that, then what are we going to do? You know, if, if, a, if a deputy leaves because of this, we have to fill that spot. How are we going to fill it? So we'll do the best we can, though. I just don't know that we have all of the crystal ball to be real precise on it. Well, to me, it'd be similar to like when we do negotiations. I mean, you want to know what the rest of the colleges are doing. And yeah, that, and that's easy to do. Yeah, we have that. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Future agenda items. Well, that'll be on the agenda next month. Anything else? Anything specifically want on the agenda next month? Number 14 is correspondence reports and conferences from other meetings. Meeting adjourned. Thank you for your valuable time. Thank you.